Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of TheCreditRepairShop.com. You can tell I'm not in my office. I'm at my daughter's store, which is not open right now, uh, but I wanted to make this video. I had an overwhelming amount of people email me last night about debt collectors reviving judgments. Um, this is a serious, serious uh, issue that is going to be... Uh, increasing over the next i would say the next years what they're doing is they're going into old judgments that uh people businesses or debt collectors were not able to collect and they're reviving them and because people's financial situations maybe have changed or even if they're just a little bit better like a little bit more comfortable uh, they're able to start initiating getting those judgments. And maybe some of those judgments were uh, put into place during COVID and because people were not employed, uh, employment wasn't as steady, uh, they weren't able to collect. And, you know, and, and also some states made it to where a lot of the court actions, uh, they maybe it would allow judgments to go through, but they wasn't allowing the garnishments to go through. And uh, so now it is like really like, I mean, seriously, people are contacting me left and right about this. They're they're waking up uh, or they're, you know, checking their mail and all of a sudden they're either getting served that they need to go to court because a debt collector is reviving a judgment. And it gets confusing because, number one, they're thinking, uh this was maybe forgotten and over with. So that it brings up those emotions about, you know, okay, now this is something that um, they remember what happened back, you know, two, three, four, five. This one this morning was from uh, seven years ago. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, all of those emotions rise up again. And that, in, in that it just like it takes a person back in time. And that this is something that they're going to have to deal with. And, uh, First thing, though, is that a lot of people start to wonder, like, can they even do this? Like, is this something that is legal? They haven't been messing with you for all of these years. What can they do? And uh, I'm here to tell you that debt collectors can revive a judgment. And debt collectors can also buy that judgment from the original creditor or another debt collector and go and get it revived. They just have to fill out the forms, go to court. If there's any fees for your area, they do that, but they ask for a court date and uh, they request to have it revived. Now, the first thing, so is there a statute of limitations on a judgment? Because a lot of people get confused with statute of limitations with reporting on credit, statute of limitations with collecting debt in your state. It basically works this way. If a debt collector or a an original creditor does not collect a debt, a debt, by getting a judgment or collect it within your state statute of limitations, they cannot take you to court and sue you civilly, civilly. And you have no legal obligation to pay it. You can pay it if, for moral reasons, but you have no legal obligation to pay it. For a civil judgment, there is a 20-year max statute of limitations, and this is outside of student loans, 20-year max, but within each state, there is a mechanism that's in place that considers a judgment dormant. And if a debt collector or the original creditor does not revive or renew that judgment, they cannot renew it if it goes past that date. There was a gentleman who contacted us yesterday, and when we did the research on the debt collector that's trying to revive a judgment, in their state of Ohio, I think it was Ohio, it was, it's a 10-year statute to revive. And it's 12 years later, so they're two years over that date. And what they do is they don't expect people to know about this. That's what a lot of this stuff comes down to. So if the person does not want to go to court, and one of the emails that I got at like 3 in the morning on the live chat, like people cannot sleep. When people start going through this, they cannot sleep, having bad dreams, just all types of things. And that's why I make myself available to be able to answer those questions, to try to take the, you know, bring down that anxiety. Because 
especially when it comes to this person is like they thought that it was over with maybe you know yeah we got away with it it got away with it like let's just put it out there and then it sneaks back up and then now you got to deal with this and it brings up a lot of anxiety a lot so for people who who think that people with money problems like it's so simple just pay your bills or this yes we want everybody to do that i want everybody to do that but it, it it's not just that there's a lot of emotion in this a lot of emotion and so you have to check to see the statutes for your particular state it, just like the statute of limitations to collect debt is different for every state or different in most states and I, I made a video you could search it where I went through state by state. I went state by state by state with the revival statute of limitations on reviving a judgment. So please search out that video. Uh, it, go to my channel, The Credit Repair Shop. If you're not subscribed to it, please subscribe to that also. And also like this video. So that clears up the statute of limitations on the judgment. So now, how long does a civil judgment appear before it expires, and I just answered that, 20 years, it could stay there, 20 years. Now, on your credit reports, that's another story. There's different things that you could do to get that information off your credit reports, even before any statutes, and also stuff like tax liens and, and um, anything with government, those types of things are not supposed to be on your credit reports. Um, what actions can a debt collector take to enforce a revived judgment or any judgment, any civil judgment. They can garnish your wages. They can freeze your bank account. They can take assets. We had a, a young lady contact us and she stated that they were taking pictures of stuff of her property at her home. And, and I'm not talking about taking pictures of the couch and stuff like that. No, they were taking pictures of her cars. They would take pictures of her house. You might be wondering how did they know that she owns this stuff? Because they could do what's called a skip trace on her credit reports to see does she make car payments or did she make car payments does she own her home and anything else like your credit report can actually uh paint a picture into how you live your life what you can afford and what you can't afford based off of what payments that you're making uh can a civil judgment be renewed this is off my my list here that i made can a civil judgment be renewed or extended and these are questions that people are asking me yes civil judgments can be renewed or extended but it's based off of being revived um what are the consequences of having it on your credit report because i've had people ask me like what well what if i don't do nothing about it uh, you know uh mainly younger people who are just now getting into trouble ask me that question um and uh i tell them hey what it's going to do is it's going to cause you a lot of pain with number one financially because you're going to be hurting yourself when you could have resolved it without having having any uh public record they're going to garnish you all these types of things are going to happen and then having it on your credit reports it's a record of something that you did so if you're trying to go out there to get credit you're trying to get a business loan you're trying to do something and judgments i don't think you could get student loans if you have judgments on your uh credit reports um we had a, a lady years ago where she had to get a judgment removed because they would not let her sign for her daughter to get a student loan, a renewed student loan. Her daughter was already in school. She was like, they're not going to let her do the next uh, semester because she needed a loan because of a judgment on her reports. And she had ended up doing that judgment. I mean, uh, uh, she did a, a bankruptcy actually on her reports, but she had the judgments. Then she did the bankruptcy and they said, with the bankruptcy, they would not let her sign with her daughter, co-sign to get the student loan. So having a bankruptcy or having a judgment on your credit report is just a bad idea. If you can avoid it, avoid it at all. Avoid it as, as all possible. Do everything that you can to negotiate it, to first challenge it if you feel that you have some issues with the debt itself. If you don't, move towards uh, uh, settling it. So you don't have that on your reports because it can you're going to end up paying the other way. Like people think you don't pay when you have it on there and you don't pay and they can't catch up with you. They can't garnish you. Well, when you go to get loans, when you go to try to get something, you're going to pay more even if you get it. And then if you don't get it, that means you just paid the price to not be able to move your life forward financially 
with being able to get something. And there's a lot of stuff that you could get utilizing credit to where you wouldn't have to use your money. Like I'll give you a good example with cell phones. That's one that I see a lot. And I'm at the cell phone store and um, we were getting another phone for uh, for one of our businesses. And I have 24 cell phones. They were, The people were looking at me and they, like, I got 24 cell phones. I never had to put a deposit or nothing. And um, this other lady, young, younger uh, lady, was getting a cell phone, and they made her put a $500 deposit. That $500 could be utilized for something else. So even, it, so it's a deposit, or you have to put a deposit on electric. I have uh, seven, seven electric bills and never had to put a deposit. Uh, so the, this is stuff where these are like, I call it like, uh, it's either called a poor tax where you pay fees on stuff that you shouldn't have to pay fees on or you put deposits on stuff that you shouldn't have to put deposits on or even if you got money you're locking up your money with stuff that you don't have to lock it up to like if you're doing um, uh, deposits on stuff simply because your credit is messed up and that's a result of what you have with items and judgments and collections on your credit report. So don't get into doing that stuff. Uh, another question someone asked me is that any, are there any limits on types of income or assets that could be seized to satisfy judgment? It, it's according to every state, but federally, you know, if you're low income, Social Security, veteran, disability, like those uh, retirement income, a lot, lot of that stuff, uh, you, there's nothing that they could do about it. Each state has different uh, exemption also, exemptions also, and you can go to the creditrepairshop.com uh, channel, type in garnishment exemptions. I'm, I've made plenty of videos on those where I walk you through all of the different types of exemptions that are available if you find yourself in that situation. Uh, so you know and but th th there are limits i mean you know it i guess to kind of bring down that anxiety that th they cannot do as much as you might think that they can do uh you have personal property exemptions right off the top if you have a business you got to be careful because they can dip into your bank account they've even been dipping into bank accounts with uh people who don't have businesses um but you know if you have a business they could do a lot of stuff they could take assets they could say well we we feel that there's a piece of property that can satisfy uh, this judgment. And then, you know, they'll end up trying to seize that, that asset. So you do got to be careful. All right. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please post them under this video here. Uh, there's the links to get help for our different services are below this video. If you have a judgment where they're trying to revive it, you can send us the information. We can research it to make sure that they're within their guidelines and then we can help you uh, resolve it if they are within the guidelines if, if they're not within the guidelines and we're helping you resolve it by stopping it which would be the ultimate goal that you would want if you need help with your credit please visit us at the credit repair shop .com. watch video what makes us different so you can see my eight point validation process my two-phase settlement process if you need your credit reports and scores go to the website your the number three scores.com grab your transunion equifax experience credit reports and all three scores if you have debt collectors coming after you early, a lot of this stuff can be stopped if you get involved with it and engaged with it early. Grab my three-pack of letters, statute of limitations, cease and desist collection activities letter, and debt validation letter. Thank you for your time. This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the CreditRepairShop.com. Say hi to Pokemon.